Hey guys, subscribe for daily content. And if you're shopping for gear, make sure you check out the description for the newest items at some of the very best online retailers. There's also links for some of the items that I personally recommend. Thanks. What's going on YouTube? Metal Complex here and today I've got another short little unboxing video to show with you guys. That was a quality, that was a quality knife slap. I want you guys to take note of that, that uh, you know how good I am at slapping that card down. There is nobody who can slap a leather card on the exterior of a cardboard box like me. So just remember that. Thanks to my patrons for supporting me and <laughs> thanks to Knife Standards for sending this in. I can't remember what it is, uh, but we're gonna find out together. Thanks so much to my, I already said that. Let's go get and get into the box. All right, like, <laughs> I, I have to switch up the intro every now and then or otherwise I just it starts to feel really robotic I mean, it's already that way, right? Everybody's so used to the intro that now There's less it, it's more of a it's Just an opportunity to Be weird. I guess this is obviously filler dialogue while I open the box. I'm sorry right? And I'm not gonna edit it out. I'm not going to you guys gotta be a part of this with me Boy, this is well packaged well packaged. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Get in there. there we go. We got us a little hard case here. There we go. Knife standards. Yes. Uh, yeah, I'm kind of starting to remember. Let's find out. Does it? Is there any in, uh, additional info there? No. Oh, you know what? There's a um, there's a thing that I almost cut into. Hold on. Let's take a look. So this is. It says RR. Hold on, there's a note. Let's just read the note. Hmm, that might be easier. Hey, MC, happy holidays, and thank you so much for taking the time to check out my design. So crazy, I had my prototype on the way to you months ago, and it got stolen out of the mail. Uh, now I do remember, I feel like you told me about this. That does suck. I'm glad this production version made it to you. This is the RR standard. Okay, so I'm, I think, the RR standard. There's another knife called the standard, right? It's getting hard with not, like people are always like, why did they use that name? Why did they call it something else? It's getting really hard. It's part of the reason why I always joke that if, if I ever designed a knife, which probably not gonna happen, if I ever did though, uh, it would be called like the Octopus Tuesday High Five Surprise because that's the only way to make sure that it's ne that no other name, has, you'd have to name it something absolutely ridiculous, you know? Uh, let's see here. This is my reason why the people explain it. It's only somewhere that people name it. I agree. Yeah, don't worry about other people's designs and go with your own. Go with your gut. Absolutely. Okay, the three versions are available. Um, I'm going to link all this right down in the description, by the way. So I'm reading this for myself right now, but I'll link the info down below so you guys can check it out. Uh, standard, which is plain, bead blasted, and belt satin, magna cut, blackout, which is DLC coated everything, and stone milled, which is stone washed, plus the knife standards milling pattern, belt satin blade. Each version is $385. Okay. Instagram, let me show his Instagram here real quick without showing his address, and that's at Knife Standard. So make sure you give him a follow. Okay, so the RR Standard. Oh, yeah, now I remember. Now I remember. Yeah. Okay, so real straightforward profile, but still, still cool. I like the, I mean, it's a rectangle, right? But we've just cut, we've cut the corners off. Uh, that's cool. Uh, right there, we have a, um, a wire clip. Not my favorite clip, but that's okay. Some people really like it, and honestly, I am gonna point this out. I like that you kept it short. I like that there's a drop and a swoop, right? If you're gonna do, if you're gonna do the paper clip, <laughs> this is the right way to do it, right? Lock bar insert, and then we have a thumb stud opener. Yeah, real straightforward and very clean. A safe design, but still doing, still relatively doing its own thing for sure. We have a flat that's fairly prominent, a nice large swedge. I think that's cool. That makes it look a little bit more unique. I think the common way to do this, because we have what we have is a uh, drop pound, uh, drop pound, a drop point blade that has been uh, compound ground. So we have a uh, initial hollow, very thin. And we have a flat out here, but instead of your typical, you know, uh, sort of transition into a Anywhere from a, uh, you know, a, what I call a reasonable tanto <laughs> to an aggressive tanto. <laughs> it's it's a, a tanto that's less argumentative, right? Um, but, uh, yeah, 
Uh, this makes it look a little bit more unique having the larger swedge here because I think the typical way to do this is to do the reasonable to aggressive tanto uh, uh, transition right here and then have the flat higher and then the swedge is a little thinner, right? Then what you end up with is essentially the Chavez 229 blade. This is a little bit different. You have a nice open ergonomic profile because there is no flipper tab and folks, it's very comfortable because of that, right? This uh, this works with knives that are small, that are medium sized, that are large, and it just all it does is just create more ergonomic options, right? Um, yeah, uh, the blade uh, seats entirely inside the handle, so when it's closed, the only part of the blade that you're seeing is I'm just saying things that are apparent, right? Like you guys can make these same observations too, but I like that. I like that the blade sinks all the way into the handle, and still manages to look, you know, it's a pretty good height. This line, obviously, the, where the belly of the blade is, in order to get that accomplished, they could not make this perfectly one-to-one -one because he's got to watch out for this area in here. Of course, you know, there's ways around that, like making standoffs with deep valleys, right? But, you know, it depends on if you, do we want the backspacer, do we not want the backspacer? Right off the bat, I think it would have been cool to just kind of continue that exact same line right here and get that blade, at, that blade belly as low as possible, right, and then curve it up. Um, I don't think it's possible to, I mean, I don't know. I don't make or design knives, right? I'm just sitting here going, I want I, what I want. Eh. That's what I do. That's what knife reviewers do. <laughs> we just complain about how we would, it, I want it better, right? So it's kind of, I'm trying to pump the brakes here a little bit. Just first impressions doesn't necessarily mean anything. I think I actually would have preferred some standoffs with some deep valleys to accommodate for a taller blade. So we get this edge closer to this line right here. That would have completed the aesthetic a little bit better for me. But this does look cool. And I think a lot of people are going to go, dude, I don't even care about that. I don't even know what the heck you're talking about. You were way too picky. And I like the way that it looks, right? So it's going to come down to preference for sure. This is extremely easy to manipulate. I was just kind of playing with it with my left hand, doing the reverse flick to see if I could do it that way too. That's typically the hardest means of deployment for me is doing it left-handed and reverse flick and I'm still I'm struggling with it right now. But I, I was able to do it. I think was I bracing on the, now I'm slipping off of it because my finger got sweaty. But I can plenty easily do it with my right hand. I think that finger's just a little bit, yeah. No double clutch or anything like that. Very easy to manipulate. And uh, it's like he said, this is magnet cut. I don't know how it's being heat treated, but I can tell you it's plenty thin behind that edge. Uh, this, uh, well, I do the paper cut thing, which doesn't really prove anything other than how sharp the factory edge is when you're cutting something like paper. And it is magnificently thin, extremely. Can we just, we're gonna tickle it a little bit. Just gonna see if we can get a couple little, little curly cues there. Trying to, this is just telling me how ready it is to bite, and it, it absolutely is, right? It's super ready to bite. <laughs> In fact, yeah, straight down, no problem. Um, so, sorry, I didn't actually show that cut, but um, yeah, very nice. Simple, straightforward, appealing EDC profile. Definitely not something, you know, not, not anything absolutely brand new, but it is cool. Um, I like seeing magnet cut. I like seeing magnet cut ground thin, um, especially when the heat treat is on point, right? Now with it being, you know, this is, this is something that, uh, you know, OEMs and, you know, people who are heat treating these magnet cut blades, this is something that is disagreed on a lot. If you get it to that optimal zone, people are worried, then it becomes chippy, right? Or potentially chippy because the range of things that people use knives for is broad, you got people like me who are just regular Joes. We cut cardboard and paper and stuff like that. No big deal, right? Getting that optimal hardness is fantastic because that edge retention or the potential edge retention is optimized, right? We're not cutting anything crazy. Some people are a little bit harder on their knives. So that optimal zone, optimal, will create some issues for them when they go back to sharpen. They might have some parts of the blade that are chipped out and require a little bit of reprofiling or some heavy sharpening. And this isn't something that every customer sees as a benefit in the long run, right? So there's a balance, right? There's a wide range of what people actually consider to be optimal as far as the end result. I prefer 
to think, I prefer to simplify it because it's easier on me. Optimal is optimal, right? If your usage on said blade uh, creates an issue, right? If, if, if you're using the blade how you're normally using it and it's chipping, then the steel is wrong for you, right? So it's less that there is a massive optimal, because some people, you know, we got, we got people heat treating magnet cuts of 59 and they're like, oh, well, the benefit is it's not as chippy. Yeah, but then you lose the benefit of the whole cake mix, right? There are different cake mixes that are better optimized for what you clearly need a blade for. So that's my take, but I'm just a regular guy. Remember, I don't actually make knives. I don't heat treat blades. I'm a guy who looks at the final product and goes, nah, nah, I want, I think, right? And then you guys take that and then you you know you process it in the old noggin and then you come to your own conclusions and at least that's in an ideal world right anyways why is he talking so much uh, welcome to my channel this is cool this is interesting this is not a review it's just an unboxing and first impressions you'll get the full you know after i get a chance to carry it and use it and give you guys what i think of course carry and usage will be exactly what i said it'll be it will not be me going out and batoning with it it will not be, be me going out and processing an enormous amount of varying materials, right, in various environments. I will not be traveling to the rainforest, to the desert, right, to the concrete jungle. I will not be doing those things. I will be carrying it around and using it like a regular pocket knife. And then I'll give my thoughts on the design uh, versus other things in its direct competition, right? The execution of the materials and the design in its general competition parameters, right? Right, 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 right. Does he know he says right all the time? Yes. Thank you so much for sending this prototype. I believe it's a prototype. In for review. Yeah, I think he said that. Uh, you guys will get the full comprehensive review, video overview here in a few weeks. Please make sure to follow me on Instagram at metal underscore complex. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you'd like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, go ahead and click on that Metal Complex logo right there and subscribe because there's definitely more coming. Thanks again for watching, everybody, and have a great day.